Well, welcome to another Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gillum. I'm an itinerant evangelist. Believes in expositional preaching. I like to do it line upon line, precept upon precept. I like to do it in a serious form. I like to do it with enthusiasm. It's a joy today to have you on the broadcast. Hope you have a Bible handy, notebook, something to write with. You'll find our text today in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2. On our last two broadcasts, we began a study in the book of Ephesians. I reminded you that there are 155 verses in this book. You can read it in a very short while. But 25 times in this book, Paul mentions us being in Christ or Christ being in us. Almost every sixth verse in this book he mentions that great truth. In his writings, he wrote over half the New Testament. He mentioned it over a hundred times of us being in Christ or Christ being in us. Uh, you can tell it was of a paramount importance to us. It wasn't about receiving him, making a decision, going down some road, joining something. But it was about being sure that Christ was in you and you were in Christ. And we had a little key verse that opened this book up to us. And it was in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Because Paul talks about in Ephesians this treasure of Christ being in us and us in that treasure. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, We have this treasure, talking about Christ, in an earthen vessel. Earthen's the word dirt, vessel's the word bag. We have Christless treasure in a dirt bag. We found that this entire operation is an inside job. God doing something inside of us that makes its way to the outside. We have already studied in chapter 1 that this inside job involved a glorious treasure. Now today I want to begin to look at Ephesians chapter 2. And I want us to see that this inside job, Christ in a dirt bag, involves not only a glorious treasure, but a gracious treasure. Because it is in this chapter that Paul will tell us that we are saved by grace. It is a gracious treasure. I notice as I unpack chapter uh, number uh, two that Paul shares three pictures in this chapter about this gracious work. One was a past picture, what we were before Christ entered into this dirt bag. There is a present picture, it would be like a before and after. And then there is a prospective picture, what the picture future holds for Christ in a dirt bag. We begin today with the past picture. And I tell you, when I look at what he had to work with, oh my, we were a mess. I find, first of all, in chapter 2 and verse number 1, we were a corpse. The Bible says, And you hath he quickened who were dead, in trespasses and sin. The little word dead here is the word corpse. I remember years ago having a deacon. He called me in on the carpet one day. Told me, he said, I don't believe man is as dead as you preach it. I said, well, how dead do you think he is? He says, I believe man has the ability upon his own to come to God. I said, sure enough, I said, you ever studied Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1? Had earned doctor's degree from a well-known Bible college. He says, I don't know that I've ever studied that verse. I said, he says, and you hath he quickened who were dead. I said, the word dead is the word corpse. I said, how dead is a corpse to you? You go down to the funeral home, they don't stop you at the door and say, uh, Lula here is in the front room and she is a, a quarter dead. 
and uh, Buddy is in the middle room. He's half dead, and Bubba's in the back, and he's all dead. No, they're a corpse. They're dead, have no ability to do nothing, have no ability to come. They have no ability to wish or will or decide. They're dead. Oh, he says we were a corpse. He says we were lying in a coffin of trespasses and sins. Trusting lying outside the boundary lines of God and can't get back in. Sins, missing the mark, missing the target, missing the bullseye, and never sharing in the prize. We are corpse now. We are laying dead in a coffin of sins and trespasses. That's the way we were when God came to us. Not only do I see we were a corpse, but I see in the text that we were controlled. He says in verse 2, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Walked conduct one's life controlled by the prince or the god of the air and Satan is like the air he is all around us he exercises and exerts control it is unnatural it is unexplainable uh, but it is a pressure a control that he has upon the lost man and most of the time, it is a control that we would have to honestly say, I didn't know that I was being controlled by Satan. When he came to us, we were a corpse. We were controlled. I notice in verse number two, not only were we a corpse, we were controlled, but we were contrary. He says in verse number two, he says, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We were the children, literally this phrase, of the disobedient one. We were like the spirit of our father, the devil. Uh, we, even after I'm saved, I often lean back to my first father, the devil and I need a constant inside job Christ in a dirt bag to bend me back to my spiritual father that saved and rescued my undying soul not only do I see in this inside work it is a gracious treasure I see in this past work that we were a corpse we were controlled. We were contrary. But I see in the text that we were contaminated. He says in verse number three, among whom also we all had our conversations. Times passed in the lust of our flesh. We were controlled by our lower nature, our old man. Every thought, every feeling, uh, every wish, every decision was controlled by that depraved, dark nature inside of us. And I know some would say, uh, Brother Gillum, I was a refined person. I was a good person can rest assured underneath of all of that refinement lies the bubbling ungodly dark depraved nature that lies with inside of everyone that has ever been born into this world and if perchance today you think when God saved you, you were a good person, rest yourself assured, God has never saved you. He does not save good people. 
He only saves sinners. Once you've come to know Him, you compare your goodness with His goodness. You see that yours were but as filthy rags. You were just an old dirt bag uh, headed to hell when God come and got inside of you. Matter of fact, old J.C. Riles, the great preacher of yesterday, says every human being that has ever been born has the seed of every wicked sin that has ever been committed living inside of their old nature. Living inside of me, living inside of you is the seed of every sin, every wickedness that has ever been committed by a human being. Oh my, I think today when he came to me, I was but a corpse. I was controlled. I was contrary. I was contaminated. But I see in our text that I, we, were condemned. He says in verse number three, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. We were by nature the children of hell. When I came out of my mother's womb, I had my face towards hell and I had my back towards heaven. You say, well, why didn't you turn around? It's awful deep. I don't know if you can get this or not. I couldn't do it. I heard a lady not long ago say to me, I wish I'd have got saved when I was younger. She was shocked at what I told her. I said, you couldn't. She said, what do you mean I couldn't? I said, you can only get saved when God will save you. Has nothing to do with what you would have liked to have happened or uh, could have, would have, should have. It is only dependent upon what God does. How is that so? Because we are a corpse. It's extremely hard to get a corpse to turn. We were controlled. We were contrary. We were contaminated. We were condemned. We were sinners under the sentence of God's wrath. We were the children of hell. We were headed that way. And unless he was to turn us, we shall not be turned. I don't know about you. That does not sound like I need a renovation. That doesn't sound like I need somebody to come in and do some decorating. You see an old possum down beside the road. and He's been laying down there several days in a hundred degree temperature. You can go by there and speak to him if you like. See if he would do better. But I tell you the only hope for the old dead possum. Is that somebody would breathe some life into him. And he would live. Jesus speaks of us sinners in Ezekiel. He said, when I came by you, you were lying as a baby that was born, still lying in its afterbirth. The umbilical cord had not been tied. You were out there as buzzing food. And I came by and said, live. Put that treasure in an earthen vessel. And you did live. It's been a joy to have you on the broadcast today. Remember, we have a study website, TomGillum.com. Come and study the Word of God with us. We can be of any help or prayer request. You're interested in a meeting, I'm an itinerant evangelist. You can email me at tbgillum, tbgillum at aol.com. Thanks for listening today.